Hello everyone. We're going to continue our online marketing primer with a discussion of social media marketing. You might recall that I mentioned there were two main online marketing tactics and one is search engine marketing and the other is social media marketing. In this video we're going to talk about um, social media, how it works. We're also going to talk about what you need to know to understand whether it's right for you and your business. So, social media marketing. Uh, these are sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. There's actually many others that would fall under the category of social media, but those are the main four and certainly the ones you would want to consider being a part of. And again, it's critical to understand that with social media, you're networking, you're not selling. People don't go to social networking sites to be sold or even really to solve their problems. They go there to socialize. So um, as part of that social socialization, so to speak, um, you can share ideas and, and do some certain kinds of things. And we'll talk about what things are appropriate in a second. So the same rules apply with any networking. You want to create trust and credibility as part of your first um, tactic whenever you go to social media sites. People aren't going to um, do business with you until they trust and, and you have credibility first. And again, the old adage that people want to buy from people they know, like, and trust is very important to understand. So until you create that trust and people like you on your social media, you certainly can't begin to even think about um, selling or talking about selling kind of things. So your role is really to help people and provide value to them. That's how you do create that credibility and trust. In the main social media sites, Facebook is certainly the primary social networking site these days. It's just taken off in the last few years. It really is, if you're a marketer, you want to think of the folks there as consumers. And if you're a business to consumer type of business, then it makes sense to, 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 to um, talk to people and try to make connections. Um, it is by far the largest of the social media sites, so over 800 million people and counting uh, at the moment are on Facebook. Twitter is another uh, big player in the social media market. It's a little bit different. Uh, you know, you're kind of putting out very short news alerts, what are called tweets, and uh, that's that's how you communicate. Yeah, until somebody decides to follow you, they're not going to get your tweets, so you need to develop your followers um, through various tactics uh, before you really have any leverage on Twitter. And each tweet has a maximum of 140 characters per tweet, so you're going to really work hard to say something very briefly and probably move people to the next stage in your sales cycle, which we'll talk about in a second. Other important social media sites is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is much more business oriented. People go there not necessarily to socialize, but really to do business, to network from a business point of view. It's it's not unlike a chamber of commerce or uh, perhaps a B&I, if you're familiar with that, as a, as a kind of a place where people expect that you're going to talk about your business. So you can be, again, much more business oriented. And it's really business to business. The folks who are on LinkedIn are typically business owners or managers or sometimes folks looking for a job, but it's much more uh, business owners uh, type of a environment. Sometimes there's job seekers and there is a great search function. So if you're looking for um, a print shop, somebody who runs or owns a print shop, you can certainly use the search function to find very specific people. Now YouTube uh, it may not be thought of as a social media site, but because it is the second most used search engine in the world after Google, um, you've got to consider it as an important part to play in your marketing. Um, so YouTube, you're putting up videos, and if you have videos uh, of your own, uh, that's where you want to put them. It'll leverage those videos, and you'll even be able to do something um, called embedding where you store your videos on YouTube and you take a certain little small piece of code, put it on your website, and then your video will stream to your own website. So it has a few different uses, but YouTube is a great place to get some word out. And it's not uncommon for a, a popular video to get 
millions, certainly hundreds of thousands of views um, if it becomes popular. So uh, it certainly has to be considered as an important marketing tool for online marketers. How do you use social network? What kind of things can you do? And again, it's about participation. You don't just uh, set it and forget it. You've got to be there to interact, be part of the conversation. So it's very important that you understand that. And that, of course, this is going to take time and effort if you're going to do that. It's certainly not set it and forget it. You've got to be there to participate. And it's about content. Uh, and you've got to create that content frequently in order to keep people's attention. Um, a post often goes by very quickly. So unless you're regularly posting content, um, then you know you are going to fall off the radar. Your visibility goes away. And you certainly have the opportunity to respond to any comments and questions that might come up. Um, if you're a Facebook business page, you can you know interact with your customers and and build your brand, build your credibility, and build your trust. You said they want to be uh, adding helpful information and things that in improve the conversation, add value to the conversation. And so in general, you're trying to position yourself as a trusted leader in your marketplace. So that's the role that you are um, trying to create, and that's the goal, really, um, to be seen as that. That's, that's the job of your social media marketing. And again, it's mostly for brand building and creating awareness that you even exist. You may not be uh, doing much else in terms of the sales cycle. You're certainly not selling. But you're going to use that to uh, meet somebody and then move them into your sales funnel. So this is a critical component to really leverage your social network, uh, social networking. You want to provide links in your post that take them to another part of your um, overall sales funnel, maybe to your website, certainly to uh, a Facebook fan page or business page, wherever is the next step that you can begin to build that relationship. Types of content that you can create. In general, you can inform, educate, and entertain. Those are the kinds of content that are going to get people's attention. Um, so those are the kind of things you want to talk about. Certainly no selling. Any, if you start selling and talking about yourself all the time um, and not how you can help your customers, then you're going to be ignored, defriended, um, and basically it's not going to work anyway. So uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether you try it or not, it's not going to work. And again, you always want to think about the old whiffed. What's in it for them? What's in it for your customers? And that's what you're going to talk about. All good marketing is about the customer. It's not about you. Uh, you only are going to get their attention when you offer benefits that they can understand and they can and they can react to. And that's how you move them into your um, sales funnel. You can share testimonials. It's a great place to tell people uh, about. Um, folks who like you, even better, have your customers write testimonials for you or perhaps your business partners. If you've got networking partners that know and know you, uh, they can write testimonials for you uh, on on the Facebook, for example. So that's a good thing to, good way to leverage uh, that content. And for job seekers, uh, it's a good place to find jobs. If you've got a position that you want to fill, great place to let people know about that too. You can add videos uh, to almost all these networking sites. Twitter, you can't do it specifically, but you can put a link to a video. Facebook, you can actually play the video right on the uh, Facebook post. So very powerful way to communicate and get um, a lot of engagement from your prospects by having videos that you use on your uh, networking sites. And if you have experts in your marketplace, maybe not even yourself, but someone who can provide helpful information, um, an expert, uh, telling people about an expert, sharing content from an expert is a great way to not only help your customers, but again, it's creating credibility for you as someone who wants to help. And it, of course, if someone, if a customer has some questions or problems, or they want to learn more about a product or service, you want to be able to respond quickly and accurately. So again, you need to take part. And your role, again, is helpful and caring, not salesy. You're not selling. 
You're creating credibility. Let's see. Let's think about why Facebook might work from a marketer perspective. First of all, it has 800 million members and counting, so there's a gigantic um, folk number of folks there. I talked before about meeting people where they are now. There's 800 million people there now, so that's the place to to be to connect with some folks. It's viral marketing. Um, you know, this may be hard to understand unless you've seen it in action, but uh, once somebody um, has a number of friends, um, every time they post something, all of their friends see that post. So this can spread, and then all the friends, friends, and be and so on, can can see that post. So uh, word of mouth is happening, and of course, word of mouth is the best type of marketing underneath it all because nothing's better than someone else saying something good about you. So this is an opportunity for that word of mouth viral marketing to happen. When someone likes you, it's a it's a low level like, but it is to some degree a recommendation for you and that does create credibility and trust. And again, content that you create can spread to each person's contact sphere or friend network or connections on Twitter, etc. So these are all great potential. And um, Facebook is a search engine too. You, you can search for different groups. You can search for different people. And uh, again, it is a search engine, so it's, it can be powerful. And if you have a particular demographic, you can search for that demographic. You can even do advertising on Facebook. And the advertising can be geared towards very specific. If you um, typically interact, your customer is a woman under the age of 21 who happens to like um, hair design or uh, certain types of cloth, clothing or music, um, you can connect with that demographic very specifically. How about from a user perspective? Why do people like to use Facebook? Well, for one thing, they're not being interrupted. Um, you know, it's typically a social environment, so they're not going to be interrupted with marketing messages. Um, they sometimes go there to avoid problems, so they're not there like in a search engine where they may actually be going to actively solve their problem. They may actually be avoiding problems, so that's one of the reasons why you've got to be very careful not to be too pushy or too salesy. They're not in that mode. And, of course, they like to connect with friends, and that's probably the biggest reason why people use social networks is their friends are there, and so they get to connect and talk um, to their friends and see what's going on. They can be entertained, educated, or informed. That's the content that we talked about before. But uh, if you're a musician, it's a great place to entertain. If you're an educator, you have something to, to share that's uh, of value. You can educate or just inform about different thi things that might be going on. And it is social. It's a very social environment. Why social media might not work for you? It does take a lot of time to do. You've got to participate and you've got to be able to do it. You certainly can create certain ways of leveraging that time, but it's it's uh, it's going to be a time um, factor that you're going to have to think about. Sometimes some businesses are not very sociable. They don't really aren't consumer oriented or. It's not something that people might be talking about or want to share with others, so it may not be a good model for you. If you're a business to business, this may not be a great place for you. If your demographic is not there for whatever reason, you know, they say that um, it's a growing f number, a growing part of the demographic, but you know, if, you're, if your customer is typically over 60, over 70, then they may not be on Facebook. But uh, if you don't have any customers, um, you're not going to be able to necessarily interact. They're not going to want to talk about you. So uh, get your customers in the search engines first and then send them to your Facebook um, social media to build that relationship. Some businesses are restrictive and really don't allow that type of brand building and networking. If you're financial services, perhaps you have some restrictions. If you're uh, certain types of attorneys or medical people, you really can't... Uh, be talking too much about your specific. You can't be giving advice. You certainly can meet people, and you can certainly create credibility uh, on a simple level. Uh, but you certainly may not be doing much um, talking about your particular business functions. 
some folks just don't like social networking. They don't like putting themselves out there. They don't like to be um, having to participate. Um, so again, some folks just it's just not a good fit for their particular style. In our next video, we're going to talk a little bit about mobile marketing and why that's something you want to think about. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.